she's a wife of one husband. <laughs> That's me. She's the mother of three. She's a believer. That's what's most important. She believes the word, and she believes that God has a plan for her and that she has the ability to walk in the fullness of what he's called her to do. So on this morning, she's going to have an opportunity to do that. So as she prepares to come forth, <laughs> we're going to have this morning with us my wife, none other than Prophetess Shante Smith. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. As I was just sitting there, I was just getting excited about just how good God is and all that he has done in my life and my family's life. And I just get excited to think, like, like God, God, you chose to use me. I didn't, I didn't deserve it. I didn't, I didn't ask for it. it. But he but chose to use me. And, and I'm, I'm grateful, grateful that, that he, he chose, chose to use me. me. I'm, I'm so, so grateful. grateful. I'm, I'm so, so grateful. grateful. I, I, my, my soul, soul. cries hallelujah. 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 God, I thank you, Father. I thank you, God. I thank you, Father. I thank you, God, because guess what? He didn't have to do it. And God is not a respecter of person. Because if he did it for me, then he can do it for you. If he chose me, he can choose you. And guess what? As a matter of fact, he has already chosen you. He has, he has already, already chosen, chosen you. you. So, so I'm, I'm so, so grateful. grateful. Um, Elder, Elder Dana. Dana. Elder Dana. Dana. Why are, are you sitting, sitting on that? Or should I ask Bishop? Why is she sitting, sitting on that? On that? Hallelujah. 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 Where's, Where's Bishop? Bishop? Back there, I think. Well, I just, just want to say um, thank, thank you, you to, um, to Bishop, Bishop for choosing me to speak on this morning and allowing God, God to speak to him. Um, thank, um, thank you, you for being the shepherd, shepherd of this house. And thank, thank you, First Lady, Lady. Linda, Linda, Mama Linda. Linda. I thank I you. I love you. you. And thank and you thank to my amazing husband, husband for always supporting me, praying, praying for me, and lifting me up and encouraging me for such a time as this. So I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful. And let's pray. Father God, I just thank you, God, for this is the day that you have made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it, Father. God, I just thank you, Father, that on this morning, God, on this chosen morning, Father, I thank you, God, that as you use me, God, that Shante will decrease, God, while you increase in my life, God, on this morning. So, Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, do whatever you want. Holy Spirit, wreck this place. Holy Spirit, move like you have never moved before. Holy Spirit, you know what your daughters and your sons came in here on this morning with what they were carrying. You know everything, God. So, God, I thank you, Father, that how they came in, God, that they won't leave out the same, Father. Oh, God, God, I thank thank you, Father, that that as you poured in me, God, to give this word, Father, I thank you, Father, that it will bring glory unto your name, Father, that it will bring edification to your daughters and your sons on this morning. So, Father God, I praise your name in advance, God, for what you are going to do in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so, let me get my glasses. Let me get my help. 
get my help. So there is a familiar person in the Bible by the name of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was from a priestly family. Jeremiah was called to be a prophet at a very young age. Jeremiah was despised. Jeremiah was hated. Jeremiah was feared. And he was prosecuted for his loyalty in serving as God's spokesman for 40 years in Judea. But when Jeremiah spoke by giving warnings and by giving hard words, because he was known for giving hard words, it fell on deaf ears. Nobody wanted to hear what Jeremiah had to say. Nobody didn't want to hear his assignment because he was on assignment. He was, Jeremiah was thrown into prison. He was tossed into, the, in, into a cistern. He was um, taken prisoner in, um, in Egypt. He, Jeremiah had no friends. He was rejected in, by his community. He was ostracized by his family. But throughout Jeremiah's life, he stood alone, prophesying and weeping over the fate of his country. Pro uh, Jeremiah was dubbed as the weeping prophet, right? So in the eyes of the world, Jeremiah was miserable. But in the eyes of God, Jeremiah was one of the most successful people in all history. And why do you think that Jeremiah was one of the successful people in all of history? It was because he could hear God's voice. So when Jeremiah heard from God, not only did he hear him, but Jeremiah obeyed him. He obeyed the voice of the Lord. Jeremiah was successful in God's eyes because God measured his success in obedience and faithfulness. So this morning, I've entitled my message, Do You Know God's Voice? Do you know God's voice? And my focus scripture is going to be coming from John 10, 27. And this is Jesus. Jesus said, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So as you know, God uses his children. He speaks to us in, in a number of ways, right? So he speaks to none of us in the same, in the same way. But I believe that it is, it is important that, that we recognize, recognize and that, that we know, know the voice of God because, because knowing, knowing the, the voice of God, God will determine how you respond to God and how you be obedient to God when he speaks, right? So the voice of God, and what does voice mean? Voice means a inner sound or inner knowing communication from God to human beings heard by humans as a sound with no apparent physical source. And the Hebrew word for voice is kal, which is K-O-L. And how do you begin to know and recognize God's voice? So in order for you to know and recognize God's voice, it starts with relationship. So when you begin to form a relationship with God, and you become intimate with God, and intimate meaning intimate in scripture, which is the word of God. And that Jesus said to them, he says, I am the bread of life, right? And as you become intimate in prayer, the Lord gives us prayer, right, as a means of communication with him. He gives us prayer as a way to get closer to him, right? And then to become intimate and worship with him. God said, God is spirit, right? And he says that those who worship must first worship him and spirit and in truth, right? So when you then be after becoming intimate with God, you then become one with God. So when you become one with God, you begin to know the voice of God when you become one with God. And then that will allow you to be obedient to God's voice. Then that will allow you to be obedient to God's voice. So this will require 
some consistency. So when you become intimate with God, it will require you to get into God's plate, into God's face. It will require you to um, set aside time where you're going to begin to um, get intimate with God and get to a place of prayer and get to a place of fellowship with God. So when you become intimate with God so that you can know God and so that you can know God's voice so that you can obey, right? then you, you will be, be able, able to get to, get to a place that God, God is trying to take you to. Okay, okay so, so what, what is his, his voice? voice? How, How do we, we know, know that God, God is speaking? And, and I know a lot of times, times we have that because initially I had that question as well. well. So, so God, God speaks. speaks. In, in Proverbs, Proverbs, I'm sorry, in 1 Kings 19.12, 19, it says, God speaks in a still, small voice. So, so the, the best, best way, way to describe God's voice in our lives is God's voice is profoundly audible. Though it isn't always distinguishable by our ears, by our physical ears, God doesn't have to speak loudly because guess what? Because God lives on the inside of you. So he doesn't have to, he's not going to sound the same way that he sounds to Bishop or the same way that he sounds to Elder Jean or the same way that he sounds to Dr. He's, he, it, 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 he's not going to sound the same, but you must know that God's voice is still in his, his small voice. Right? right? But, but when, 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 when the, the prophet, prophet Samuel, Samuel heard God's God voice, but, but he, he didn't, didn't recognize it until he was instructed by Eli. Eli. He didn't, he didn't know, know God's God voice in that, in that moment. moment. So, so God, God called Samuel three, three times. times. Four, four times he called him. him. And he, he had, had to, to he, he kept, kept going to Eli and he kept saying, going to him as if he called him. Right? Now granted, Samuel, Samuel was, was serving in the tabernacle, tabernacle at that time, but, but he, had he had no experience. experience. He, he had, had no, no direct, direct experience and no personal encounter of revelation with God at that moment. moment. He, didn't, he didn't have an experience and an encounter with God. So he really didn't know really what God sounded like. Even working in the tabernacle, you would have thought he would have had some kind of encounter with God, right? But it was so ordinary sounding that Samuel thought that it was his teacher, Eli. It was so ordinarily sounding. It sounds like your brother or your sister calling you. It sounds so ordinary, right? So you, it sounds just like the normal person. So that's, that's why he thought, thought that, that it was, was Eli that, that was actually, actually calling him. And, and then we then have Gideon. He had, he had a, physical a physical revelation from God, from God right? right? And, and he, he still doubted what he had heard, heard to, to the, the point, point of asking, asking for a sign. sign. He, didn't he didn't ask for a, a sign, sign not just one, one time, but he asked three times. He asked three times for a sound. Here it is. You have the angel of the Lord. And, and you, you still, still need confirmation, confirmation that, that that's, that's him, him right? right? So, so sometimes, sometimes it's an, it's an inner knowing, knowing right? It's, it's an, an inner knowing, knowing because of your time spent, spent with, with God. God. So, so sometimes, sometimes in order for you to know that God is speaking, it's going to come from a place of prayer. It's going to come from a place of being intimate with God. It's going to come from a place where you begin to establish a relationship with him. Knowing God's voice is just not you just knowing God's voice. No, just like you spend time in a relationship, we put time and we put effort in, re in marriages and our spouses, right, and, and our girlfriend and our boyfriend and getting to know them, right? It takes time to get to know that person. It takes it takes time, time to, to fellowship, fellowship with, with that, that person. person. It, it takes, takes time, time to get to know them. them. So, so if it, it takes time, time to get to know a person, person how, how do you, you think it's going to take to get intimate, intimate and to know God's, God's voice? voice? You are you going to have to put in some work so that you can recognize the voice of God. So what ways do God speak to us? He speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. 
right? right? He speaks, he speaks to, us to us through the Holy Spirit. Spirit. God, God speaks, speaks through the word of God. He speaks through the logos, his word. He speaks to his rhema word, right? And and sometimes God will give you a word specifically for you. Sometimes we can look at the word and that word will just pop out and he'll give you a word that's pertaining to your life at that particular time, right? And that's how God speaks sometimes. Sometimes God speaks through dreams. I used, I used to be, to be a, a vivid dreamer. dreamer. I, used I used to dream, dream all of all, all the time. time. And, and actually, actually my, my dreams, dreams that I used to dream was, was actually the things, the things that, that I'm seeing now. now. So God, so God showed, showed me these dreams, dreams before he actually, actually put me in, a, in, the, in the place of the actual dream. dream. He, showed he showed me the, peop- the, um, the, 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 um, the dreams of people um, in the vision. He showed me women. He showed me all of these things. So before he actually put me in that place, God had to show it to me in a dream. Hallelujah. And visions in our thoughts. God, God speaks, speaks through those, those right? right? He, he speaks, speaks through creation. creation. He's look, we can look around, and a lot of times I look at the sky and be like, God, it must be, it, it has to be. I know that there is a God for the ones that don't believe that there is a God. It's no way that you cannot look at the, look at the sky, right, and look at the, the, the big body of waters, the, the, Pacific, the Pacific Ocean and the, and the Atlantic Ocean, right, and not know that there is a God, and God not speak to you in that place, right? And then God speaks through difficult times. If you know God, God has spoken to you through some difficult times, right? And God has gotten you through some difficult times because I know God has gotten me through some difficult times. I didn't know which way I was going to go, but I know God had spoke to me and God had brought me out because of those difficult times that I was going through and I didn't know how I was going to get through. Amen. And he speaks through gifted teachers. He speaks, he speaks through, through gifted, gifted teachers, teachers like, like Bishop, Bishop that, that uses the Bible as their source. Now, I'm They're not talking, talking about, speaking about speaking through people that's not going to give you, that's, that's not, not going to give you godly wisdom. wisdom. That's, that's not, not going to give you wise counsel. I'm talking about people that's going to, that's going to, gifted teachers, that's going to speak to you and that's going to give you God's word. That's going to help you. And it's not going to stagnate you and keep you in a place of stuck. That's That's gonna, gonna, they're going to they they bring God's, God's word. word. So, so develop, develop an intimate, intimate relationship with the Lord is, is not, not only necessary, necessary but it's beneficial. beneficial. You, you got to know, know that developing, developing an, an intimate, intimate relationship, relationship with God, God is necessary. necessary. And, you and you should get something out of the, it being necessary, necessary right? right? Spending time with God, you should, even though we don't go into it looking to get, you know, well, we do. You know, you know, we go we in, we're looking, looking for something from, from when we go into God, God when, we, when we're, we're praying and we, we're giving, giving God our requests. Yes, we are looking for something from it, right? right? We, we are. God, God says, says that we can seek him and we'll find him, right? We can ask and he'll give it to us, right? So we are looking for those things based on the word of God. So I can't say that we're not looking for anything because we are looking for any, for something because it is beneficial to us. So the voice of God gives instructions. The voice voice of God God gives guidance. guidance. The voice voice of God God gives gives peace, peace, right? right? The voice of God gives peace. The voice of God gives insight. It gives revelation. It gives you a way in. It gives you a way out. It gives you a way over. It gives you a way to. It gives you a way through. It gives you a way over. It gives you a way out. It gives you a way to. God's word gives you solace. God's word gives you peace. He said, I'll give you peace that surpasses your own understanding and guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. He, he said that in his word. He said that he will give it to you. He said he, he, he will set the path for you. His word, his instructions, God's voice will do that for you. And he will give you correction. I thank God for correction. I thank thank God God because he gets gets me straight straight when I'm not right. right. He gets gets me straight straight when I want to be in the the flesh and not in the spirit. spirit. He gets gets me straight. straight. So So we should should be be thankful thankful for the the correction that that God gives us and and for the the rebuke rebuke that he gives us. us. Because the the rebuke rebuke is not to harm you. The rebuke is to help you. It's to get you to a place where he's trying to take you. And sometimes rebuke is necessary. 
and the voice of God will give you comfort. The voice of God will give you comfort. He has comforted me on a number of occasions, right? So listen, we can't talk about the voice of God and not talk about the Holy Spirit, right? We can't, we can't do that. So Holy Spirit, that's the third person of the Trinity, right? And the Greek word for Holy Spirit is paraclete, meaning advocate, helper, comforter, right? And then we have the Trinity, the trifecta, or the trifecta, which is the is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, right? So they're three and one. So the Holy Spirit is what? The Holy Spirit is God, right? So how do you receive the Holy Spirit? You receive the Holy Spirit by repentance and acceptance. You believe in the death, the burial, in the resurrection. You believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross, right? You believe you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right? So the Holy Spirit then enters in and it takes residence in you. It, en it then enters in and it lives in you. The Holy Spirit lives in you. It resides in you. The Holy Spirit lives in you. It resides in you. Nobody should want to live, be in Christ, and not have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. So let me give you some proof about of the promise about the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. Okay. So... It says, it says, okay. okay. So, so why, why is the Holy Spirit, Spirit called an advocate? advocate? Why, why is the Holy Spirit, Spirit called an advocate? advocate? The, the original, original Greek, Greek word for the, this, this title was a legal term with a broader meaning than counsel of defense. defense. It, it meant, meant one who is called alongside to help. help. It means one who is called alongside to help. It conveys the idea of an encourager in a sense of a legal consultant. I'm going to say that again. It conveys the idea of an encourager in the sense of a legal consultant. So just as Jesus encouraged and he assisted his disciples, the Holy Spirit would be there for them as well. So we can depend on the Holy Spirit to guide us, to instruct us, and to encourage us every day of our life. We can depend on the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit reveals all truth. So when the Holy Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. And so the Holy Spirit is a teacher, right? So the Holy Spirit is a teacher. Before I started doing any of this, right? And before I got a word about all of this. And I used to be so concerned about what I didn't know, right? I used to be concerned about who was and who wasn't going to receive me because of what I didn't know. And as I begin to, you know, ponder, and I was, you know, getting on probably, my husband would never tell me I plucked his nerves or anything. But as I was, um, you know, preparing, like, for my lives and doing all of those things, and I would be so nervous, right? I would be so anxious because I said, I don't, I don't, how am I going to do this? I don't have enough word in me. I'm not, I don't feel smart enough to do this. I don't even know if I'm even equipped to do this. And so, and so I'm, I'm going, going through, I'm, I'm studying, studying, the word says study and show thyself approved. approved. So I'm studying and I'm and showing I'm my approved so God can what, what? Bishop say, so, the, so, so God can God approve you. you. So, so I'm, I'm studying, studying. I'm, I'm doing, doing my part, part. But, but even, even doing my part, part I'm getting so excited and anxious about what I don't know. And I knew that God will, what you have studied, right, God will pour, pour, um, pour out from that place. But I was so anxious about what I didn't know. And I couldn't seem to shake the fact about what I didn't know. 
until I began, and you know, my husband was trying to calm me down and, and get me all, you know, try to encourage me, you know, so I can continue to move because at times I felt like I didn't, I wanted to stop because I didn't know enough. I didn't know the word enough. I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't even know how to, to do anything when it came to this. I would go to church every Sunday. I would go to sit in on Wednesday Bible study every Wednesday, but yet I still didn't know, feel like I knew the word enough to bring the word. I knew the word enough to get me through the trials and tribulations of my life. I knew the word enough to know when I had to pour from the word so that I could get through one Wednesday to the Sunday into the Sunday to the, Sunday to the Wednesday. Wednesday. I, knew I knew enough in, in that, that, but, but I, I didn't, didn't feel that I knew enough to actually bring God's, God's word to God's people, people. even in, in him, him telling me that this is your assignment. assignment. I, I called you for this, but in that, that moment, moment, I did, I did not, not know. know. I didn't, I just didn't. But then the Holy Spirit began to teach me, and the Holy Spirit began to tell me, he said, don't worry about that. He says, I'm going to be your teacher, and I'm going to send the people that is going to pour into you so that you can get what you need, so you can give to yourself and you can give to the people. So you don't understand. So when you, when I come in, I've been married to this man for 20 years, this year, well, 21 this year, but I've been, I've been around Bishop. That's my father in love. I've been around him. I know that he knows the word. I know that he's a master of the word. So I I never in my wildest dream thought that I would be in a place sitting under the master teacher. But I need you to know that that was an assignment that God gave him for, for bishop for me. So God knew I had it to be planted in this place so that I can receive what I needed from God to do what he was calling me to do. It was ordained by God. God already set it up for me. He already put it, put it in motion for me. He already knew when I was like, nah, I don't know if I want to go there. I don't know, sweetie. I don't know. But then like, just like one day, God just spoke to me and said that that's where you're supposed to be. And see, sometimes we don't listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is speaking, and sometimes we don't allow the Holy Spirit to do what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Sometimes we're more in the flesh than we are in the Spirit. So that's why you got to get an intimate relationship with God so that when God speaks, speak, not only will you hear him, but you will be able to move in the thing that you heard. So when I heard the father tell me, I, listen, I'm your teacher. I'm going to send your teachers. So God did just that for me. So Holy Spirit is a teacher. I know him for myself to be a teacher. I know him for myself when I said, sweetie, I said, because my husband, when, you know, my husband usually, except for Wednesdays, my husband used to go, usually go over my word to make sure I got everything in order for me, right? To make sure I'm flowing, I usually ask him to do it. And I said, sweetie, I'm not going to get you to do it this time. I'm not going to get you to do it this time. I said, guess what? I'm going to go in God. I'm going to go in God. I'm going to go in God. Because God gave me the instructions. God told me exactly what to do. So I went in God today. So, hey. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit is a comforter, right? He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So what, whatsoever I have said unto you, peace I leave you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give it. I give unto you. So I know God even as a comforter. God had to comfort me and me not knowing who I was. He had to comfort me and me not even know, knowing that I was even equipped to even bring the word of God. Because, see, sometimes we disqualify ourselves for something God has already qualified you for. And sometimes you don't move in the thing that, God, that you've disqualified yourself from doing that God has qualified you to do, and you miss it. We miss it because we disqualify ourselves. And God is saying, I don't want you to disqualify yourself. If I called you, then it is so. So I don't know who in here that has disqualified yourself from doing whatever it is that God has given you to do. But God says, don't disqualify what I have disqualified. Don't disqualify.
disqualify yourself. I have approved you. I have approved you. And the Holy Spirit is an intercessor. Who knows him as in the Holy Spirit as an intercessor? Because sometimes we have the deepest needs, right? And we got the deepest desires. And we don't really know how to express those needs and the desires that we have, right? And Paul calls um, these words the wordless groans. Because we don't know, we don't know what to say, right? But the Holy Spirit will intercede on your behalf. I don't know about you when you've been in a place and you've been in a place of prayer and you've been in a place of distress and you like God. I don't know even what to say. I don't even know what to pray. God, I'm just messed all up. And then the Holy Spirit will begin to intercede on your behalf because the Holy Spirit knows what you have need of. The Holy Spirit is ready. The Holy Holy Spirit is on standby. You just got to activate the Holy Spirit when you need the Holy Spirit, even though the Holy Spirit already know you need you got need of it. The Holy Spirit already knows, right? So the Holy Spirit is on standby. The Holy Spirit is always available. The Holy Spirit is always ready. The Holy Spirit is always, what they say, sitting on ready. I'm sitting on ready. When that, that Holy Spirit activate. Holy Spirit activate, right? Holy Spirit activate. So we can activate the Holy Spirit anytime we want to. Because God is on the inside. We said the Holy Spirit is God. And God resides on the inside of us. The, the Holy Spirit resides on the inside of you. So we can activate the Holy Spirit anytime we want. And guess what? The Holy Spirit is waiting. The Holy Spirit is waiting for you to activate him. The Holy Spirit is just sitting there. I know she, I know she need me. I know she need me. I know he need me. I just want him to activate. I just want, and then sometimes the Holy Spirit is activating even when you're not asking him to activate. The Holy Spirit is speaking when you're not even asking him to speak. The Holy Spirit is just waiting to move. The Holy Spirit is on standby because you can rely on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is just waiting on you sometimes. But God said, I already spoke. You already heard me. You already heard, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is in John. Okay. This is, I, I missed the scripture off of here. But it says, but when the helper comes, the helper being the comforter, your advocate, your intercessor, your counselor, your strength, your strengthener, your standby comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father. He will testify and bear witness about me. But you will testify also and be my witness because you have been with me from the beginning. See, the Holy Spirit is saying what, what, what Jesus and God is saying. They, the three are bang record um, in heaven, right? So we don't even know what to pray. Well, we don't even know what to pray. The Holy Spirit will give you the answers. The Holy Spirit will give you the solutions. The Holy Spirit will give you what you are in need of. The Holy Spirit is on ready. See, the Holy Spirit gives life to what is already in the spiritual realm. Realm, and he is causing it to manifest here on the earth in the natural realm. See, the, the Holy Spirit, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, their agreement is taking place. Agreement is taking place. So it's already happened in the spiritual realm. It's already happened. 
and we're just looking to see that thing manifest here on earth. See, what my assignment was already, it already occurred in the spiritual realm. So now God is allowing me to see that thing manifest in the natural realm. God has given some things, given you some promise, promises, and you got some things that's been set up for you in the heavenly realms, in the spiritual realm, that you have yet to see manifest yet, as of yet. But God says, don't be afraid. Don't fear. God says, I'm still going to do for you. Do it for you. I just don't, don't need you to give up. You can't give up. Don't give up on me. I'm going to do everything that I say. You just got to stay in the race. You can't give in. You got to keep on pressing. You got to keep on believing. You got to keep trusting. You just got to keep believing by faith that I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. He says that I'm not like man that I should lie. No, I'm son of man that I should repent. If I said it, then it is so it's going to happen. And guess what, baby? You can take it to the bank. Every word that God has said about you, because if he said it, it's going to happen. I believe it. I need you to believe it on this morning. It's not too late. You're not too old. You're not too old. God says, I'm still going to do it for you. But are you going to trust me? For what I promise you, are you going to lean on me? For what I promise you, when it gets hard, when it gets trying, when you feel like you're not equipped, when you feel like you're not good enough and you're not capable, God says, I am still going to do it. But I just need you to stay in the race, baby. I just need you to keep pressing on. I just need you to press on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father. So knowing God's voice is necessary. Knowing God's voice is not even an option. You got to know God's voice. Guess what? You got to know God's voice because when you know God's voice, guess what? A stranger's voice you're not going to follow. When you, know God, when you know God's voice, a stranger's voice, you are not going to follow. So in order for you not to follow a stranger's voice, you will have to know how to follow God's voice. And here's biblical proof. In John 8, 47, it says, whoever belongs to God, hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. So to hear God's voice, you must what? Belong to God. See, th these are the people that have accepted the Lord and Savior, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, right? These are the sheep who will hear and they will recognize his voice because they know him as their shepherd, right? If we are to recognize God's voice, we must belong to God. So I ask you, do you belong to God? Do you belong to God? So how do you follow him? How do you follow him? Biblical proof. In John 10, 27, Jesus said, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So Jesus' analogy of the sheep pen Right? So the sheep are the ones in Christ. So you will be considered as the sheep. We're the sheep, right? And sheep, the sheep in Jesus' time were highly attuned to the, to the voice of their own shepherd, right? So the shepherd, let me tell you what the shepherd is, who the shepherd is. The shepherd cared for the sheep. The shepherd protected the sheep. The, 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 the shepherd kept the sheep from danger and kept the sheep from harm. They kept the sheep from, from the, the, the wild anime, animals and the thieves. They, sometimes they slept in the pen in order to guard their sheep. That's the shepherd. They, the, the shepherd named their sheep. They named each and every sheep. They called them by name, just like God had called you by name. He called me Shantae. He called me daughter. He called me prophet. Just like he called my name, God calls his sheep's name. The shepherd calls his sheep. And just like the, the shepherd, he feeds the sheep. He feeds the sheep. He, feeds the sheep. he, feeds the sheep. he, feeds the sheep. he feeds
leads us. He, 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 he takes the sheep and to get their food wherever they're supposed to get the, the, the grass, the, 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 whatever they're supposed to get their feed, their food, right? And, and I'm sure the, 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 the shepherd prayed for their sheep. I don't know no shepherd that don't pray for their sheep. So I'm so sure, I'm sure the, 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 sheep, the, the shepherd prayed, prayed for their sheep and, 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 and interceded for their sheep and was believing for their sheep, sheep right? right? And then, and then, the, then the, the shepherd walked in front of his sheep, of his sheep. And, 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 and they, they followed, followed him. him. And, the and the reason why the shepherd walks in front of the sheep, sheep because if danger comes, the shepherd will see it ahead of time. So the shepherd went ahead of the sheep. And then, and then the, the shepherd, shepherd spent time with the sheep. The shepherd, the shepherd often spent all day and all night with the sheep. Sometimes the shepherd slept in the sheep. Sometimes the shepherd laid across the entrance so that nobody could get in. That's how destined the shepherd was in his sheep. So they put the sheep pen in place, right? The sheep pen, the sheep pen is in place. Right? right? So, so in the sheep pen, pen, pen this, this allowed, allowed multiple, multiple flocks to be housed in a, a single sheep pen overnight. Multiple, multiple flocks. And, and the individual, individual shepherds could, could retrieve, retrieve their, their flocks simply by, by calling their name. Their name. So, so only those sheep who knew that particular, that particular voice, voice would come, and, and the, the, other, other, the others the others would not respond to a voice that they did not know. So you got multiple Shepherds, you got five shepherds in here with all of these sheep, and then the sheep are responding to the voice of the shepherd. So there could be no bishop. There could be bishop got his sheep. Um, executive pastor got his sheep. Um, Pastor Sandy got her sheep. So they all got their sheep. They all in this um, this sheep pen. They all got their sheep, right? But El, um, Dr. David is not able to call bishop sheep. Because they're not going to respond to his, to his voice because they don't know him. And Bishop Sheep is not going to respond to, to, to Dr. David because he, they don't know his voice. So a stranger's voice, they're not, going to, they're not going to follow because they don't recognize the voice. Because, see, there has been some time that has been vested in the sheep by the shepherd. So they know the voice of their shepherd. So in this analogy, Jesus is explaining the reason many of his critics cannot and actually will not respond to him is because they are part of another flock. So they are part of another flock. So those who belong to Jesus recognize his voice and, and follow him while retreating from the voice of the stranger. So, so they are recognizing the voice of their sheep and they are retreating from the other shepherds because they don't know them. They don't know their voice because they don't know their voice. They're not going to follow their voice. And that's how we should be. We should know God's voice to the place where we're not willing and we're not going to follow a stranger's voice. Hallelujah. So those who... Don't listen to Jesus, voice, or guess what? In plain terms, they're owned by somebody else. They're owned by somebody else. And here's the biblical proof. It says John 8, 42, 47 through 47. It says, as Jesus pointed out prior conversation, such people actually belong to Satan. Some people actually belong to Satan. Everybody ain't in Christ. We might think people around us, everybody is in Christ. No, everybody is not in Christ. See, the word says that the, um, that the, um, 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 the steal, kill, and destroy. Right? The devil comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he comes to do, to steal, kill, and destroy. Like he will come sometimes and he will try to steal, kill, and destroy. My voice, he'll try to steal, kill, and destroy and try to keep me off path, right? He'll try to steal, kill, and destroy so he can try to discourage you. So, listen, you got, he will try to steal, kill, and destroy because he's a thief. He's a thief. 
And sometimes he will enter in. He's a sly little thing. He will try to enter in because the devil is like a thief. He, he, his purpose is to spoil and to ruin people's lives, right? His, his plan is to deceive people. So he tries to convince them that Jesus is not the only way to receive salvation. He tries to make them believe that there is no punishment for sin. He tries to deceive people in many other ways, but when we believe in Jesus, we are safe. We are safe. When you in Christ, you are safe. People are running away because they think that your life changed. Yes, it does change to a certain extent, but I'm not, me being out in the world, yeah, that was fun too when I was out in the world, but listen, when I'm in Christ too, I'm in Christ and I have fun. I have a good time. So I'm, I'm, I'm safe in Jesus Christ. I can still dance. I might not dance the way I used to dance, but I can still dance. Right? I can still go and I can do those things that I love. God still knows. He knows you. He knows what you got, what you, what you like to do. And God will give you a way to do those things. So we are safe in Jesus Christ. We are safe. But the devil can never take away our eternal life when we come into Jesus. So we have this, we have this wonderful gift of life. Right? So, 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 so a stranger's voice. So when we allow a stranger to come in, the stranger can mislead you. The stranger can misguide you. The stranger can be a distraction. The stranger will be a disruption. The stranger will take you away from the thing that God has called you to do and that has predestined you to do before the foundations of the world. So sometimes we allow the stranger voice to overtake God's voice. And I came to tell you here that this morning that the Holy Spirit wants to reside in you. The Holy Spirit wants to teach you. The Holy Spirit wants to move in you. The Holy Holy Spirit wants to be on standby for you. The Holy Spirit wants to activate in you today. The Holy Spirit. So I ask you, do you know God's voice? Do you know him? Do you really know him? Can God speak to you and really give you a word? Can God speak to you? Do you know his voice to, a, to the place where you know that was God and that wasn't a stranger voice that you follow because the stranger will take you someplace you ain't got no business going. The stranger will take you someplace that your mind don't have no business going. The stranger will cause you to stray. The stranger. But when you allow God, the Holy Spirit, to live in you, to reside in you, to build you, to cause you to go to a place that you've never been, you've never seen, do you know his voice? Do you know him? You're not just saying you know him because you, you're saved. We already know he enters in. But have you activated the Holy Spirit lately? What's your prayer life look like? We come to church and we say this and we hallelujah, praise God. But are you activating the Holy Spirit? Are you getting intimate with God so God can give you answers? Because a lot of times we're going through the motions of life. We're going through the motions of life. And God says, I got the answer for you. The answer is in my word. The answer is in my word. So are you going to allow me to really reside in you? Are you going to allow me to really move in you? Are you really going to allow me to transform you? Because the Holy Spirit should be transforming you. Is your ear in tune to the Holy Spirit? When God gave me this word, I did, I did not, not want to bring, bring it. it. I, did I did not. not. I, said, I said, God, God I don't want to talk about the voice of God. God. I, tried I tried to stray, stray and, and I tried to go, go this, this way, way and go this way, way but, but I, I couldn't. couldn't. He, wouldn't he wouldn't allow me to. to. He wouldn't allow me to. And first of all, I, he's giving me this scripture, and I'm like, God, I'm trying to figure out this scripture. I'm trying to figure out which way I want to go, which way you want me to go, because it's so profound. Which way do you want me to go? I don't know how to break it up. So how do you want me to do this? 
and that's real. How do you want me to do this? Because we get up here and we do this, and people think that it's, it's, it's easy, and people see you doing it, but see, they don't know what comes with it. They don't know sometimes the doubt that comes with it. But then you got to be in tune to God's voice, and when God speaks, you got to be ready to, to listen, and you got to be ready to move. you got to be ready to be obedient. So as I was going to do a, um, a, ver a nurse visit, and I'll never get this, um, this confused. I, I was going to do a nurse visit. We live in Laurel. I was going to Annapolis. I went to the school at the wrong time. It was supposed to have been this week coming up, but I went last week. I went Thursday. And I was like, but as I'm in the car, I said, God, and this was Thursday, I don't know what you want me to do with this word. You won't let me do something else. I'm trying to be obedient. What do you want me to do? I need you to speak, Holy Spirit. I need you to speak, Holy Spirit. I need you to speak, Holy Spirit. And as I'm going down a road, and as I'm praying, as I'm praying, the Holy Spirit begins to speak to me. The Holy Spirit begins to give me direction. The Holy Spirit begins to tell me to do this and to do that and to do this. The Holy Spirit begins to give me direction. The Holy Spirit begins to, begin to tell me what to put here and what to put there. So when, my, when it came to my husband, it, my husband don't trump the Holy Spirit. My husband don't trump God. So I had to make a choice. Am I going to believe you, God, or am I going to ask my husband, or am I just going to trust you, Holy Spirit? But the Holy Spirit showed up for me. It wasn't by happenstance that I went out to that school on the wrong day. No, it was, it was supposed to happen because the Holy Spirit knew that this was the day that I was going to give her what she needed for the assignment that she got in seven days. I never got an assignment in seven days. I never got an assignment. I never, and I was nervous about that. And I needed God, I needed him to show up. Because if he don't show up, I'm not going to do it. If he don't show up, I'm not going to just do it out of me. No, I need God to show me. Because I need God to give me a right now word for his people. I need God to, 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 to have a, get in an intimate place with God. It wasn't about Shantae, it was about God's people. What do your people need? See, I said, God, I don't know. What? Your voice. Everybody should know your voice. Well, apparently not. Apparently not. Apparently somebody needed to be, this needed to be reinforced for somebody. Apparently. But I had a choice. Was I going to trust my own self and get this done? Or I was going to trust my own, you know, my own anointed man of God, and he was going, you know, make sure I had everything in right order, right? I said, no. I said, sweetie, I'm doing this on my own. I said, God said, this is how I'm supposed to do. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit did it. The Holy Spirit. But you know why the Holy Spirit was able to do it? Because I knew his voice. Do you know his voice? Because if I would have followed the enemy's voice, the enemy would have took me someplace that I wasn't supposed to go. But I knew God's voice so I could trust that what he was giving me was what the people needed outside of myself. Because I was in myself thinking, God, I listen. But I never want to bring a word that God does not give to me for the people. Because you got to be in a position where you seek God. Are you seeking him in your everyday life? Are you seeking him? Are you saying, God, I don't know your voice. Your voice right now is unclear to me. God, I need you to speak to me. And God will speak to you in that small, in that small voice. He'll speak to you in that inner knowing. See, one thing I do know, I know when I hear God's voice, and I knew I had heard God's voice in that car, and I knew that I can trust God, and I knew that if I, if I just put it on him, I just put it on him, it's on God. If I mess up, I'm putting it on you because you gave it to me, and I trust your voice. 
I trust, I trust your voice. voice. I, trust I trust your voice. voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we just Father, thank we you, thank God. God. We just thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for your truth. God, we just thank you, Father, that you brought edification to your, your daughters, your children on today. Father, we thank you, God, that the Holy Spirit never fails. God, we thank you, Father. We thank you for the trifecta. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you, Father, that you are in agreement, Father. You are on one accord, Father. We thank you, Father, that they are bearing witness, God. We thank you, Father, that the Son does nothing without you, Father. Oh, God, we thank you, Father, that they are all, everything is working together for our good and for those that love you and have been a call according to your purpose in Christ Jesus. So God, we thank you, Father, that as we activate the Holy Spirit on today, Father, we thank you, God, that we have a new understanding, God, of your word, of your voice, of what you're saying, Father. So God, we ask you on this morning, Father, that you would activate us on this morning, Father, that you would do something on the inside of us, God, as you activate us, God. Oh, God, we thank you, Father. Holy Spirit. Spirit, do what only you can do. Holy Spirit, speak in the place, God, where they don't even recognize, um, recognize the stranger, Father. Oh, Holy Spirit, speak on another level, Father. We thank you, God, on this morning, Father, that your will is being done on earth as it is in heaven. Holy Spirit, we thank you for giving us what we need on this morning. Holy Spirit, we thank you for residing in us, living in us, having your being in us. Holy Spirit, we thank you, Father, for when we try to do it on ourselves, the Holy Spirit will continue to move and speak. So, Holy Spirit, we thank you on this morning for giving us a new way of thinking, God, so we see you move in a different way. So, Holy Spirit, reign on this place on today. Today, God, Holy Spirit, give your people on this, in this place, God, up your presence, God. Show them you, God. Holy Spirit, touch them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, move right now. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, if you don't know the Holy Spirit, if you have not experienced the Holy Spirit ever, or even you haven't experienced the Holy Spirit lately God is saying that you can activate the Holy Spirit right now so if you need something from the Holy Spirit God is saying come and receive on this morning come and get what you need if you need a touch Holy Spirit is ready to touch you if you need a word Holy Spirit is ready to give you what you need if you need instructions Holy Spirit is here to give you what you need if you need a plan Holy Holy Spirit is here to give you what you need. God said, I have God before you, and I've made every crooked place straight. So if you are worried about the road that seems crooked, God said, I already gone before you. I already gave you what you need. I did it before the foundations of the earth. So if you need something, Holy Spirit said, come and receive on this morning. I'm not going to pull you out. Holy Spirit is going to pull you out on this morning. So you got to have an ear to hear on this morning with the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So if you need it, the altar is open for you to come and get what you need from the Holy Spirit on this morning. Begin to just speak in your heavenly language. Lift your voice. Invite the Holy Spirit on this morning. Hey, 
Hey, yando do kose, mando ko basi kia. Ho manda da da kaya basi da da ha. Hey, mansura da da kaya da da shiki. The Lord is telling me to huraka ya tasha to anoint your ears. Hey, mansuta, roko mansara da kasha, roko masata. Oh yo, so my God, oh roke mansura. Ronda yanda shina, ho manya na na norose. Ho mando ko ra ma 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 sida, ro ma 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 